Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be trying to play through the new Kerbal Space Program career mode in as few missions as possible. Now, I will point out that I hypothesized last night on Twitter that I could do it in two missions with the budget restrictions, and someone pointed out that Abyssal Lurker also claims to have done the same thing. So I am making a point of not looking at any of his postings until I have completed my attempt. I think I can do it in two missions. The trick is we're going to build, of course, a rocket to go to Minmus using uh, solid rocket boosters as staging, uh, obviously. The only difference with the previous versions is that we want to do this uh, using the least amount of money possible. So uh, we are, this is going to cost me 10672 uh, And to do that, that means I actually have to go to the mission control and accept all the missions, which gives me enough cash to get the launch underway. If you've seen this before, then... You, or if you've seen these kind of missions before, you'll know about the power of solid rocket booster overheating as a method of staging. Generally, I fire them when I reach about 50 fuel units, which is a little conservative. I might get a little more Delta V if I was riding the ragged edge a little closer. This one didn't quite explode simultaneously, and that's a real danger when you do this, but it happened first time and I was very happy. Finally, we get ourselves into our liquid fuel only. This is quite a large upper stage for these kind of designs. Um, now, you'll notice that the, there's these external tanks which have fuel. Those are actually to provide stability when I land. So, the problem is there's no fuel line, so I have to pump the fuel into the middle. And that's not the fastest thing. If I was doing this with mods, I could use TAC Fuel Balancer to bring the fuel into the middle in the real time while firing the engines. But as it stands, I have to do each tank individually. And when the tanks are done individually, the whole thing is unstable and will spin around. So now, this is the meat of the mission. We're really going to be collecting as much science as possible because we want to unlock as much of the tree as is necessary to perform a second mission to the moon and collect all the science from there. We're going to go to Minmus first. We're going to land there and then we're going to collect all the science that is possible. Now, of course, we've reached orbit. We have actually satisfied all four of our contracts and we can go back and get more contracts from Gene Kerman. Not all of these will be useful, but uh, we can do a bunch of these in the existing mission. So periodically during this first mission, we'll be able to get more and more uh, options and more and more money. This is always good. Anyway, uh, we complete our burn out to Minmus. It's relatively easy, leaves us with a, a decent amount of fuel. And of course, we're collecting science in deep space all the way. You'll find Jebediah getting out of the capsule to get EVA data quite a lot. Remember, if you want to store multiple crew reports, you have to get out of the capsule, take the crew report from the capsule, and then put it back into the science store section of the capsule. Now we're in low minmus orbit, we can start getting per biome science. So this is in an approximate polar orbit. I actually correct it into a more polar orbit. But after I get the crew report, I start getting science from Jeb. That means I right-click on him, perform an EVA report, and hope that it's a new one. Now, there are 10 biomes in Minmus. There's the lowlands, the midlands, the highlands, the slopes, the poles. There's the lesser flats, the flats, the great flats, and the greater flats. The flats are actually easy to identify, as are the poles. It's the, the slopes and the highlands and the lowlands that pretty much involve lots of... Uh, spamming. Now I can get off the ladder to get more EVA data because you know you can time accelerate when you're not on a ladder. But uh, ultimately, once I got the once I got the slopes, highlands, and lowlands, I could identify everything else from space. For example, there I can see that I'm over a flat section and store that data. Now, after several orbits of the moon, it became time to land. And so I pretty much just picked a random flat, like looking landing area. I didn't have a good idea of where would be the optimal place to land. So I just uh, picked somewhere that looked like it might be close to some highlands. And uh, it's relatively easy landing operation here. It's not like, a, you know, some of these tall, thin rockets that I've designed that go to Minmus. This one has a reasonable amount of stability. And it's just a case of 
watching the rocks, watching the shadow, and then killing my velocity until I come down vertically at the landing site. Brilliant. There we go. Wobbles just a little because the engine is longer than those tanks, but it still stands up. And now it's on to the ground mission, collecting EVA reports and planting flags. Oh yes, let's check for more missions, because more missions may have spawned. Hey, there we go, collect science data, plant a flag. Well, I guess I'm going to have to plant another flag just to make sure we complete the contract. Contract fulfilled. There we go, we see more cash, more science, more reputation, more rewards for this highly productive space program. Okay, so Minmus is pretty small and it's light enough that you can actually get up quite quite big distances uh, using the EVA pack. So I was pretty much able to fly to most of the biomes using the EVA pack. And uh, then what I did was I did a hop around the planet using the um, spacecraft to visit some other locations and then of course put put me closer to the targets that I'm actually trying to get to. As I said, there are 10 biomes and with the help of a biome map, I was able to visit them all and uh, collect data with Jebediah Kerman on his EVA pack. Um, if you're wanting to save fuel, you can actually land quite hard here and uh, bounce around, but I just generally made some nice landings for the video. I didn't show the awful ragdolling as Jebediah skipped across the surface for hours at a time. <laughs> and if things really, really go wrong, you can always walk. It just will take several hours to walk the distance across the planet. I mean, literally at four times speed, you're talking you know, eight hours or something ridiculous like that. You don't want to do that. You just need to uh, do everything that you can within range. And then once you've finished up uh, stuff in range, uh, there we go. Just like adjusting the orbit here. Trying to get myself right on target. Look at that. Overshooting just a bit, almost. Correcting and coming down and not much fuel left. Oh dear, yes, ragdolling. Bit of ragdolling there. So yeah, we did some moving around, as I said. We tried to get to various landing positions. Uh, I can also collect crew reports while landed. So I, after planting some flags, I made points of trying to get to the slopes, for example. And uh, that required checking... EVA reports while falling towards the surface to make sure I got in the right place. So there, just bringing it down kind of short of my lowlands flag because I realized there was a slopes biome here. So we had to bring it down gently onto this little biome, collect the data and get off before we fall over again. It's a good thing that Minmus is such low gravity that these things they happen in slow motion. They let it give you time to think. Even at four times regular speed, you can probably keep up with what's going on. This did take several hours. Even with the EVA pack, you know, velocities had to be limited because uh, you didn't want to end up stranded somewhere and having to walk home. But eventually, after something like two weeks or 16 Kerbal days, there, that's what it says, of missioning, we get to leave and head into orbit once again. We're not quite over yet. We have collected a lot of science. But uh, next thing we want to do is fly by the moon, of course, and get some more science from the vicinity of the moon. We have selected a contract which will uh, allow us to get a little more reputation and stuff for me. A Mooner flyby. Now, of course, I want to exploit the encounter with the moon to make sure that I get kicked back in towards the planet Kerbin. In fact, it turns out that I had loads of fuel left. I could have probably visited at least one more biome if I'd really planned this mission out a little better. But uh, it'll have to do. We get a, an encounter with the moon, and you see I'm trimming it. What I do want to do is come around the front side, and I want to come down low enough. You've got to come below 50 kilometers so that the you can get low altitude or near moon science. And you see me mucking around with my orbit just to make sure I get that front side pass that will then kick us onto the planet Kerbin so that we get a we get a return there. Yeah, I had tons of fuel left as it turns out. Here we go. 
make my little correction here. It's a tiny 13.6 meters per second correction. I want to get that as accurate as possible, of course, because uh, if you mess this up by a few meters per second or a fraction of a meter per second, it could literally slam me into the moon instead. But uh, I have enough fuel left, and so a little flight around the orbit brings us into our encounter with the moon. You want to be careful not to time accelerate through this, Otherwise, again, you can end up flying into the moon. But time to get my science. Uh, and what I do, you see, is I use a bit of fuel to swing myself down to within about 10 kilometers of the surface. So, And I head back to the space center just to see, oh, look, I've got more science. More, more contracts that I can actually get here. See, they just keep popping up. And uh, the good thing is, of course, that there's a lot of these are not going to expire. So I visited the moon and Minmus, and that means that the progress system will be generating missions that are for Duna and things like that. Anyway, uh, collecting low altitude data here, once again, it's a case of spamming mission, of spamming while on EVA. We have lowlands, midlands, highlands, craters. We get a bunch of these. Now, if I was really, you know, interested, what I could do was uh, perform a little injection burn here, and uh, during every low-level pass, try and grab as much of the lunar biome science as is possible. But honestly, at this point, I was getting pretty bored. So I just accepted the fly past, and then uh, actually, given that I had a lot of fuel, I adjusted my orbit to make me arrive on the daytime side of the planet with a, just a little bit of fuel for a correction. And it turns out that I didn't need any correction because it's going to send me over the deserts. You can see that during descent there, Jebediah jumped out to do a little more science. And then, of course, we have re-entry, which is not in an ideal attitude, but the single soul parachute gets us stable. We have 10 units of fuel here. Now, hopefully, or the plan is, of course, to bring the spacecraft down and use that tiny bit of fuel left to make sure we land without exploding anything on the surface. When the parachute opens, it brings our velocity to about 13 meters per second, and we need just a little bit of rocket power to slow us sufficiently so that nothing breaks and we get us an intact spacecraft. Jebediah jumps out, collects a little more data, more data, more data, plants a flag, and then his epic mission, his epic first mission of this space program is complete. So we recover Jebediah. This is Jebediah, we get 61 science in total for all that, and we get... Well, our reputation is now up at 705. That's pretty good. But the real scientific bounty will come from the Minmus spacecraft recovery. Recover it and we get over 2,500 science in total between all our missions. That is not a bad reward. That will unlock a large part of the science tree here. And hopefully we will be able to unlock enough of the, sci the parts that we can perform a thorough survey of the moon. But to build my epic Mooner survey spacecraft, I'm going to need as much cash as I have. I have about half a million funds right now, and I can get a few more funds, not just by complete... I've obviously completed a bunch of contracts, but I can get some more funds by uh, going to Gene Kerman and basically accepting all the missions. Just accept them all, because the time limit on, on completion isn't going to be a problem. The advances will help with my scientific dreams of uh, destroying the moon's science bounty. So yeah, first thing you do when you're unlocking the tech tree is you go down the bottom and you get all the science instruments to help you get more and more science. And now I need a few things up the top to make sure I can build a spacecraft capable of doing this. I need docking because I want to have a lab in orbit and then I want to have another spacecraft which lands on the surface and does all the science. And uh, yeah, it looks like I have enough to get the nuclear engine here. I think this will work. I think I can build something big enough. And you know what? We'll find out in part two whether I can do this. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.